what's the harsh reality no one accepts? Some parents just don't love their children. I was reading an article about 10 things therapists don't tell you. And one of them was that many parents admit they don't love their children. This one scares me. As to why it scares me, when my son was born he was more a stranger in my house and it was not a love at first sight. I was happy to some extent but never felt like you see in movies. I talked with therapists and be reading about it here and there. Not uncommon for dads to have to work on bonding with newborns. Son is now 10 months and much improved on bonding. But you always kind of judge how you initially reacted and if that's who you really are. Nobody is truly selfless, and that's okay. There's a guy named Robin Hanson who's an interesting thinker and he's co-authored a book called The Elephant in the Brain about the hidden motives in our daily lives. The book says exactly what you say, but Hanson doesn't seem to find that depressing or disheartening. As far as I remember, he put it like this. Humans don't look that bad when compared to other animals. The only way we look bad is when we compare ourselves to the angels we pretend to be. Mistakes do define you. The little ones don't, but if you make a big mistake, it will alter your life to an extent. Saying that they don't matter is a lie that will prevent you from diagnosing life problems later down the line. This is something I wrestle with a lot in terms of my recovery from alcoholism. I quit young, at 24, and have been sober seven years without relapse. Despite that accomplishment, I have alcoholic neuropathy, nerve damage, that will never go away no matter how long I'm sober. It gets a lot easier the more time you have. And luckily, my nerve damage is relatively minor but it's not uncommon for me to get painful pins and needles sensations and numbness in certain fingers and throughout my left foot. People assume only hardcore alcoholics who drank for decades have these types of problems, but I was physically dependent for only three years and it happened. Alcohol is really dunking hard on the body, I'm so grateful it doesn't run my life anymore. The world goes on after you die. The world went on before you were born. Bad things will happen to you for no reason. I always like the Star Trek quote it is possible to commit no mistakes and still lose. That is not a weakness. That is life. For that reason. Some things just happen and that's the way it is. Some people just can't be saved. You could give them every benefit in the world and they still could choose to throw it all away and you can't do anything about it. This is a tough lesson to learn. People have to want to change. Nothing you can do can make people change if they are resistant to it. This hurts and I'm not sure how I feel about it. I work with children who have suffered immense trauma and abuse. Far worse than you can imagine. I work with them when they're teens, and they've started to utilize coping mechanisms that society would deem to be poor despite the fact those coping mechanisms have kept them alive. They may steal, lie, run away, take drugs etc. They do it because no one has made them feel like they're worth believing in. Statistically these children, when they become adults are likely to not have jobs, have healthy relationships, or even have a home. It isn't a choice, they simply don't believe in themselves enough to think they're worth the effort. It isn't benefits they need, it's love. Some people just don't get a happy ending, some people never find happiness or satisfaction. People tell you that there is light at the end of the tunnel but for some people there isn't, they never get to see any light, just darkness. I once lived with someone like that. She was in her 70s slash 80s and I rented a room in her house for a few months. She was truly miserable. She told me about how she grew up in Turkey with an absent father and abusive alcoholic mother. She told me how she escaped her overbearing family by marrying an Indian diplomat. Then how her husband abused her for years, she was missing teeth because of it. Then when her family moved to Canada how she worked for years for her husband and kids with no thanks. By the time I moved in with her she was all alone, living in low-income housing, yelling at her kids on the phone once a week about how they are terrible children who never visit and ranting to me about how terrible her life had been and how many regrets she had. She was an awful person to be around but it was clear she had lived a life full of suffering. You don't always keep the good friends you meet. But that doesn't mean you can't make more later on down the road. From the Bojack Horseman finale, and something I've realized and made peace with. I think there are people that help you become the person that you end up being, and you can be grateful for them, even if they were never meant to be in your life forever. Beauty matters in how people treat people. 
As I'm average looking guy with amazingly photogenic kids I get told a lot that I must have a beautiful wife. My daughter used to get free stuff all the time from shopkeepers etc. Wow she is so cute, can I give her a sweet etc. Really opened my eyes, absolute strangers would offer her small gifts all the time. All human beings are capable of being viciously immoral. There's a point where we can be forced or force ourselves to become completely animalistic. We can perpetrate murder and genocide, as just one example, and if justified to ourselves correctly, we will feel no remorse. We like to think that the only people capable of such horror are a minority but the truth is that we are all capable of it given the right circumstances. Pain is inescapable. Not even acknowledging that pain is inevitable and preparing for it ahead of time can lessen it. You will be taken by surprise, you will be hurt, you will not enjoy it, you will not be able to numb it, and there is nothing you can do except take it on the chin. Not everyone is going to like you, no matter how hard you try. Do I need to be liked? Absolutely not. I like to be liked. I enjoy being liked. I have to be liked, but it's not like this compulsive need to be liked like my need to be praised. You will likely be lost to history. In just a few centuries, nobody will remember or even knew you existed. Sad, I know, but you just have to accept it. Just make sure to dab or do a handstand or something dumb when a volcano goes off to give archaeologists a good laugh a couple hundred or so years later. People can just simply fall out of love with you for no reason. You fretting about whether it's you or something else or the investment is basically you giving them the reasons to strengthen the reason why they stopped loving you. When they could very much not have a reason at all, feelings and priorities can change. There's a group of people out there in the world that would be very happy to see you every day and love you and accept you for exactly who you are. You'll probably just never meet them. I don't know who most of you are, and it'll be like that forever. Therefore there will always be someone who doesn't care about you whatsoever. Most people will be completely forgotten within the next 100 to 200 years. No conscious thought about them, no mention of their name ever again, for eternity. It's kind of freeing to think about that because it means it really doesn't matter that much what you do. No one is paying that much attention to you, and all the shit you worry so much about is just temporary. There is no karma. Bad things happen to good people. Bad people do bad things that never catch up to them. Good people do good things that screw them over in the long run. It's all random. There could be a gamma ray burst coming from deep space to fry our entire planet within a second and we'd have no way of knowing it. However, the chances of it happening right now are astronomically small, so best not to care. Very late, but... Sometimes, you are the problem in a relationship. And if people keep on leaving you, it may well be your fault. Even if you don't feel like it is. Yes, a lot of yes. People fantasize about finding the one, but a relationship is 50% finding the right person, and 50% being the right person. You're the bad guy in someone's story, so many of your enemies will never admit to doing anything wrong, but the thing is neither will you in some situations. People justify their own behavior to themselves. That's why so many people can't apologize and double down on the shitty things they do. Everybody is born different, treated different, and will live different. There is no equality in society and there will never be. You are not perfect no matter how much you try. You will make mistakes, and you will learn from them. Not admitting to those mistakes makes you a dick to other people, and they will look down on you. Nothing is fair. Some are born rich. Some are born in poverty. But you can change that throughout your life. It's in your hands. Money buys happiness. It will fix 99% of your problems. It will make you happy, but it will depend on how you use it. Money is power. The rich can do almost anything. The sky's the limit. If you are born rich, you are born in power. You will fail, and it is really is okay to fail, not make the mark. Get fired, have a so cheat on you. Just keep getting back up. Neither failure or success defines you as a person, it's how you react to each that affects your life positively or negatively. The real eye-opener is that, you define you. <laughs>